Eden Zero has been going for more than 100 chapters. And the thing that constantly that I've been really thinking about when it comes to those chapters is about the whole, uh, you know, the, the whole space group that Justice is in. You know, I, I think those guys are really cool so far. I really like them. I think they're, you know, it's a very, I feel like, staple thing to do with the interstellar union. Um, I, I feel like it just makes sense when you have a big space series you have some form of you know intergalactic uh kind of like peacekeeping or government uh the, the one that i think most towards i feel you know you're either gonna think maybe i feel like a lot of people probably think something towards like uh the jedi but they're kind of different because they're more of like a, a religious group was a identifies peacekeepers I, I don't know much about star trek but i i, I imagine it's similar to that I, I i like how it's like i imagine it's similar to something i don't know about much about i know a tiny bit about i know like, kind of like the base premise was the united federation of planets that's kind of in in a sense the the a little bit of the idea for these guys you know there, there's some form of space kind of like military or government set up and i i was really happy to see their some of their designs here um i've, I've expressed when it initially came out, Jaguar's design is definitely amongst my favorite in Eden Zero. I, I really like his design. He just looks badass. He looks intimidating. I feel like especially with his his facial hair being done in a way that it could have easily come off as like a goofy character, but then is handled more more serious. It's like look at Captain Connor pre uh reveal versus like now when he's got the hat on with the shadow a little bit over his eyes and he's he just looks like some mysterious kind of you know deep space uh you know pilot as he is he, he looks a lot more dangerous whereas with it off he, he's got a silly he's depicted more with this like nice uh slick haircut and silly nose he's obviously like a fat older dude but like after when he puts the the captain's coat and hat on he looks like he's got some experience under his belt and i i i like that overly intimidating kind of like presence with uh with jaguar i think the the cool kind of like spots around the eyes and then he's got the slit eyes really really drives it home for him just in general i think that makes his design really cool plus he he seems to have a very broad figure if you like look at you know his facial structure versus like something like justice or any of these other characters he has a very broad chin and he just looks like he's probably like a big dude i feel like he's just a big dude just looking at him and I I have a I don't even want to call this a tinfoil hat theory because I feel like this is actually a pretty credible theory just based off the idea that one character at least within Eden Zero is going to have some form of dragon based ability. Hiro Mishima loving fantasy stuff, and he had dragons in all of this all of his major series. And I know that the space dragons already exist in Eden Zero, but there's going to be one character that has dragon abilities and at least as of right now even though it's jaguar and i get like you know the the cat slit eyes and the you know it's more like spots it does also look like dragon slayer you know more of the reptilian eyes as well as it kind of looks like scales around his eyes obviously that being um the first place not to like had scales visible around when he went to dragon force back in tower of heaven i'm wondering if that's just a coincidence or maybe he's gonna kind of have like this sick kind of like uh almost cat dragon kind of setup kind of like um Kind of like if you if you go back and look um if you go back and look at the part where all the dragons in, in fairy tale if you haven't read it then you could just go look it up there's a there's a part where all the dragons are coming out of the eclipse gate and the one that gets closed off is like this almost like a saber tooth tiger dragon um and I, i'm wondering if that's gonna be uh i wonder if that's gonna be the the, the kind of thing for this dude for jaguar i don't know it's, it's just something right now i think design wise though he's really cool I, I was really happy to see the uh the members of the rasio and says galactica just pretty much exist in this chapter like i i i understand that there was like other stuff to set up but the uh well the rasio and says interstellar sorry um as these guys um i i was much more interested at seeing them because they're they're not only new characters, I mean, that always, that has a level of just kind of like extra crisp to it when you have characters that you haven't seen before, but when there's a new group, and especially when this group is like mirrored over from a previous group, like we have the Orasio and Seis Galactic are the bad guys, and the Orasio and Seis Interstellar, which are the seemingly good guys, let's just assume they're good, maybe they're more neutral, who really knows, like we don't have like an overall kind of alignment for the world, like, because the main cast, the Eden Zero cast, 
used to belong to a clear villain, and we don't really know entirely how Shiki's going to be uh, handling things in the future. I still kind of like feel like he's going to be almost like an anti-villain, kind of like how you have an anti-hero. You have a hero that does, you know, does its work with more villain methods. If if, if Shiki's more like a villain, does things with good methods. I, I don't know. It's just it's just something that I've kind of like got a got a little bit of a theory on at least at the moment. Um, but after the chapter starts out, I I wanted to get into like the stuff that I um that I really had interest in. Whereas like for the most part, um, one second. And I said, do you want to play games, man? I'm like, give me a second. I, I, I joined up with his group long before I should have uh, when we, when I'm, I'm doing this video. But, um, yeah, so I, I wanted to get more into, like, what I was more excited about. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a couple minutes. Um, but the, the chapter begins, like, with Xiao Mei. Xiao Mei's just doing a recap thing and laying up stuff for the future. The Eden Zero ship kind of comes through and is now in the, um, I don't know how it's pronounced, Aoi Cosmos? Aoi Cosmos? You know, it's, it's very water-themed. There's just, like, streams of water going into all these different directions. You have all these space fish. And I thought the same thing uh, that that Rebecca noticed uh, in this chapter, that it's similar to when they found Captain Connor. I'm wondering, like, if he tried to cross over into the soccer cosmos without... Um, or, sorry, into the Aoi cosmos from the soccer cosmos without Ziggy and the Dark Stars. And maybe he lost and, you know, he just kind of got his ship destroyed and... He just kind of like was hanging out with these fish that they wandered over or something. Something that kind of is like in this almost silly manner. I, I, I like that idea that it's like when he's not at the wheel, he's not doing his job, that Captain Connor is just kind of like a goofy dude. Whereas it's like, okay, when he's on business, he is who he is. He, he gets what he needs to get done. Um, and after that point, you have just like, you have Clean and Jin and they're just doing their thing. Jin just kind of like pushing that still trying to stick with that like oh i don't even want to be in this team kind of thing raw 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 but it's like dude you clearly you don't gotta admit it we, we all know you secretly want to be on the eat zero team i mean it's a cool team but um as it were now he's just like oh no i'm just here for uh for what i need i mean you know as we know like getting stuff healed for his sister and clean on the other hand seems she seems like she's okay with it so i'm wondering like if if she's okay with it do you think like eventually he'll just i, I assume eventually he'll want to join um due to events surrounding his sister i would assume but he's just going to be grouchy as it is right now and just kind of like be be a little bit crabby dude i did like when uh he walked away and shaky's like man i thought i i thought i was friends with that guy dude what what happened and then i was just like hey, you don't you don't know how to read a person very well just because you have like a interaction with him doesn't mean you guys are friends now um but uh you just have some more mystery set up, like, between the, the Shining Stars are talking about how not just their memory pre-Ziggy leaving was erased, but also the logs in the Eden Zero ship. So, if you if you essentially imagine it like, you know, you're in a video game, you have all the areas in a map unlocked as you go, it would be like you just wipe that out and you're just playing a fresh run. It just doesn't show anywhere that you've explored before and it's just going to be blank territory. But there's the theory that maybe they are taking the same route... So maybe this is going to lead them along the way that they need to go. And this is just a theory. Hermit believes that she might have found something within the logs that maybe they can recover. So there'll be something at some point afterwards that uh, we could get as like a, oh, you know, a reveal for, um, you know, uh, for, for part of the mystery that's going on right now with um, with with Ziggy and, and what exactly he's trying to do and, and why he's doing all this, you know, turning on Shiki and stuff. The mystery of, you know, why did he erase uh, all the information up the Shining Stars as well as the Eden Zero. There, there, there's a lot in there to kind of like, at the moment, just kind of, you know, scratch the head at and, and, and whatnot and just kind of be curious and speculative, but still... Don't don't overshoot. Ex uh, I don't want to say expectations. That isn't the right word. Overshoot theories to kind of like where you just have an idea in your head and you just only want that one idea. But um, you need to keep got to keep some ideas. I still like my idea of that like Sh Ziggy's nicer side was like a an error in his programming and he knew he would go back to the like, the evil programming at some point. But uh, now they're going to this planet Red Cave, and it was shown at the end just because I don't want to end on the uh, the chapter, the discussion of this chapter on the note. Is it's like called Red Cave? It's a fire planet, but they when they go there, it's like a water planet. You they see water. I'm guessing the fact that it's Red Cave that it's gonna have some form of like underground like system of like magma ducts and stuff. There's gonna be 
probably a lot of volcanic stuff on this island. I'm just guessing. And maybe we'll get sort of like a hot spring set up. And this will be the planet that's like a cool down chapter before we get into the big stuff. You know, something like, oh yeah, we can have a, a swimsuit chapter. And it's just like the characters do some stuff. We'll get some loot stuff. And then it'll be, it'll be more for fun before we get into this new guy, this Poseidon Nero, this uh, member of the Eurasian says Galactica, that as they describe essentially the best way to go about him, it's like, when it's um when it's Drak and Joe, Drak and Joe likes to pretty much nest on a planet and then just do what he has to to take control of it from the shadows. And then he has, you know, each of his he's got his connections spread out throughout the cosmos for him to do things discreetly as the best he can. Whereas this dude is just like, no, I rule this cosmos. Um, I'm in charge. And it, it, it'd be like going to arrest him is like going against an entire country because he can probably, you know, mobilize and, and, and militarize everything that he controls. Whereas like if it was Drak and Joe, Drak and Joe just has all this connection and all this information on people. So it's whereas Drak and Joe was more sneaky. This guy is just more like just an overall presence and authority like he's probably going to be way more it's going to be the difference between a crime boss and a king essentially it's going to be the the base way to look at it which is cool because then you also have hell uh elsie is more of like the space pirate i like that they're all they're all very different so far we're halfway bit through them so i'm i'm very curious to know like which which is going to be like maybe like the is this guy going to be the pure evil one because rack and joe we don't know what the the setup is there always has to be at least one that's pure, just malefic evil. There, you know, there are always going to be ones that, are, like Drak and Joe, who have a more complex storyline, like backstory of like how they end up getting to where they're at. Versus, like, you know, you're going to have somebody who's just like, yeah, you were, you were vile from the start. There was no saving you. You've always been this, you know, dark and and, and more evil kind of character. You're always going to run into those. And so I, I'm kind of hoping that's going to be for way there. That's going to be the way for this guy. I'd like to see just some old fashioned um, there. They go into a big battle. I'm wondering if that's going to be the what the dream that uh, that Rebecca had, like where, you know, Cheeky's like, oh, you know, what would that, you know, hap like when she was talking about Happy Bot and it was like, oh, well, what's a what's a broken machine going to do? And, you know, and so I'm, I'm curious to know how that's going to go, because that's obviously going to be at some point a really big battle. So is that going to have to do with this? If, if it's going to be a, a large scale battle, I imagine going against the king is going to be the best one to really kind of like put that out there. Um, but I guess we don't know the full force of the other Rassion States Galactica. And I feel like besides Elsie, because we, we know that Elsie at least seemingly is the strongest out of them. But I, I feel like whoever is saved for last, I, I think we can just logically just through process of elimination guess like, oh, this character is going to end up being the strongest. Which, maybe it's Elsie, maybe it's somebody else. Drak and Joe being the first out. And even though Drak and Joe was really cool, I like that he doesn't... Even if it, he comes off like, a, you know, the first one out, maybe even the weakest out of the six. He never seemed, like, weak in general. I almost hiccuped, but I caught myself. Uh, he never seemed weak to any degree like his his ether gear was really strong um and as well on top of that like he seemed really smart he seemed like he had all the connections he excelled at what his whole position was the thing that really put him as a, a bigger danger because just having his ether gear i don't think would put him anywhere close to like the level of danger he was i think it was because of his connections his knowledge the the the, the secrets that he has um with other people and obviously the um, that's going to be the danger because the difference between someone like Poseidon Arrow and just going off right now and Drak and Joe is Poseidon, you know, for the most part, oh yeah, everybody in this cosmos is going to be under his control. Everyone there is going to be, um, they're, they're going to all essentially be at his beck and call. They're going to all be working for him. Whereas when it comes to Drak and Joe, nobody knows. Nobody knows who would be working for him. Nobody knows who would be, you know, tied under his, uh, you know, under his management. Uh, Elsie just seems like she'd be just being all around terror to kind of go up against. Looks like she's just got a large scale like array of destructive capabilities with all her ships and resources and stuff. So we'll see. I bet she's got her own sick like hideout planet somewhere, treasure planet. <laughs> Actually, maybe. Anyway, um, after that point, like they're they're going to Red Cave. You just get the flash, the flash over. You had Creed and um, what was the other guy's name? Victory, and then obviously Justice. And you know, obviously we know they're all code names. I 
I don't think Justice's name has been given out yet, but I think Hiromashima has said that Justice was a code name. So curious to know what his plans are and like why these characters have code names. Maybe that was his. Maybe that was his reason. It's like these are all code names, similar to how they were in in Fairy Tale with the Erasion with the Erasion Six. Because there's the Erasion Six in Rave Master. There's the Erasion Six in Fairy Tale, and then there's the Erasion Six Galactica and Interstellar in Eden Zero. I really like that he's uh, you know he's got different versions of them, especially when the Erasion Six in Fairy Tale originally weren't supposed to be that name. They were going to like that was a placeholder name, and then he ended up kind of just going with it, and it kind of just worked out for him and i think i think in the long run it was still pretty it's still pretty cool because now you have a um an ongoing setup you have an ongoing aspect uh for him as a writer to put in a series kind of like a theory on um so we'll see exactly what's to come uh of this because you see all these other characters and you know you get some back and forth with them i i like their designs i'd say out of these six i mean out of these six jaguar is obviously my favorite out of these ones the dude looks looks badass he looks intimidating he's got he's able to pull off that sick facial and his hair in general just looks cool he's got a sick hair design uh, it just, it just looks badass i mean look at his big ass eyebrows too he just looks intimidating it looks like he'd, he'd be a dude to beat your ass and then give you a life lesson afterwards so i'm like you know 65 year old retired marine of like 32 years or something you just have no idea what you're getting into but he doesn't hold it against you because he knew he was gonna beat your ass at the start or something and you're just like listen man i just i fucked up <laughs> it and he's just like yeah i know and he's like picking your teeth up off the ground he just looks like a badass i i really like that about him i think he just looks like an intimidating character he looks like somebody who's gonna be really fun to see um just in general and colonel i i think because I, I think his rank is colonel i'm just going to double check and look at the chapter really quick um yeah colonel and i think that's 05 um i'm just going to look up really quick officer ranks and I, I think that's in the army because it's colonel it might be marines too i'm not i'm not 100 i don't remember all of them it's been many years because i was wondering like well where does he probably rank because this is their own group so maybe this is their best fighters outside of like old op retired characters oh sick okay so he's he is a what is that oh six yeah oh six so he's that makes sense actually because if you know anything about military right when you get the characters like when you get into officers who have the stars on there you know any 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 of that oh seven oh eight all right sorry yeah oh seven oh eight oh seven through oh ten they're uh they're more political guys most of the time so i mean it makes sense why the the the, the 06 dude is is more of like on the front lines leading this team Maybe the other guys will still be OP as fuck. I, I would assume so. I imagine they've all got some pretty good abilities. But there was some cool stuff of just like um, of when they were talking about like Justice knew that it wasn't one of Noah's uh, people that ended up taking down Drac and Joe. He was talking about how like the ether rating he had um, was the same as on the Eden Zero. You know, he talks about the he talks about the Demon King's ether and stuff. And at that point, they're like, oh, you know, is there is an Ether Master out there as good as Drac and Joe and uh, and Elsie that's not in the Arrascon Space Galactica? And then we see uh, the reveal from Justice as he's saying that he as well has this power. So I'm wondering, I, I, I'm still very curious of what the number of people in Eden Zero that have Ether Gear are. Because it's, it, it's clearly not like, oh, one in every 10,000. It seems rare. But it's not, like, unheard of to run into one. It's not like in Fairy Tale you have lost magic, whereas, like, you already had a person, only a percentage of people that could use magic, and then lost magic is all stuff that was forcefully kind of, like, tried to get buried down by people because it was too dangerous and whatnot. So, like, running into somebody with, like, a lost magic, or even a dark magic is still kind of rare, whereas, like, maybe there's different versions of Aether Gear, or it's just, like, there's a handful of them. Like, there's a, probably a good amount but they're still all dangerous. I, I I think we can all imagine that. Well, no, because um, Paul's is definitely not dangerous. It's useful, definitely not dangerous, at least from what we've seen. Maybe you can utilize it and be dangerous. I don't know. Um, but as it were, I, I, I still more really want to see more of them because we at least get one other one. Um, which one was it? The, the, the tired guy, Eraser. He clearly has ether lines like on his face. Uh, I'm very curious to know like what his character is going to be because we have what? Um, Cure, what was it? Cure... Jaguar, Holy, Eraser, uh, Feather, and Justice. So they have code names. Um, 
The one that did notice the first guy, um, Cure or Girl, I don't know. But the robot, I can't really see anything. Uh, either way, it clearly is some form of cyborg. At least the cyborg, definitely way more mechanical than the other characters. Jaguars looks badass. You have this character, Holy. I'm very curious to know what she's going to be like. She seems to be a little bit of a tease. She was, like, messing with, uh, with, um, messing with Justice a little bit. You have this Eraser dude, who I'm guessing is going to be, like, the rival to like the guy who messes like uh with justice a bit and then you know the guy maybe like went to the academy with him or something there's got to be something fun to this guy because he just has that kind of like lazy look to him like he's some dude who probably trolls people and he, he's probably a bit of a he's probably somebody who doesn't take to fights to all that seriously and you have him like he'll probably be one of those guys that like will wreck somebody like some lesser character but who he won't he won't do it and just like a, oh i'm gonna just destroy you kind of way it's it's more of like it's like a cat and a mouse he's just gonna be beating you and you're like oh you're trying yep beat you again blah blah and just kind of like you know run that defeat on somebody but we did get information when it came to uh when it came to justice like as his character because he's talking about how elsie took everything from him and then he's going to kill him or he's going to kill her so that's going to be really interesting to figure out what that backstory is because i've, I've mentioned a lot of times that I mean, really, Justice and Elsie, it's Urza and Jalal with their roles switched. I feel like a lot of people can understand that. It's very obvious that Hiroshima did that on purpose. I mean, literally, the, the Skull Fairies logo is the fairy tale logo um, turned sideways. It's just kind of angled differently. Like, he clearly did that, like, knowing fully well, yeah, this is what my intentions are. So, I don't know. Uh, but it's, it, it is a really interesting, very based idea because it does flip the characters very drastically, um, especially when you take it from a magic standpoint and then, like, put it into space. I feel like it, it just kind of, like, sets it into a uh, a little bit more of than it's just, instead of it just being reversed, it's, like, the ideas generally that, you know, one is pursuing the other, they're kind of, like, on ups ends, one's good and one's bad, um, swapped. And, and then you run that and figure out what the plan is to do with that. So I, I still like that a lot. I thought the chapter was pretty good. I actually liked it a lot for something that, like, not a ton happened. It was mostly set up. And, I, and as I've been talking for 22 minutes, I, I still think it was, for the most part, way, way taken away by the Arasion State's Interstellar and just the, the, the Interstellar Union in general. I think they definitely were the best part of this whole chapter. And, and like I said, it's not like there was a big fight. I mean, really, it was like, hey, we arrived, you know, some foreshadowing. There was some stuff about Captain Connor and as well as, uh, you know, Poseidon Nero. There, there was a lot of interesting stuff just to set up. But seeing the design, seeing seeing the, these guys and you know, as an opposing force, the Arastan State's Galacta, I thought was super badass. And I'm really excited to see these guys um, operate. So I'm, I'm guessing that... Jaguar is going to be the strongest out of at least these six. Who knows if there's any but any people within their group ranked above them, but I'm going to go with Jaguar for now. I, I definitely out of the six of them, I want to see him fight the most. And Justice second, just because I want to see what Justice's style is. I'm hoping he has like a. I'm hoping it's still a reference to the style that um um that we saw. You know, if you've, if you've read Freight on Rave Master uh, with Sieg Hart and Jalal with kind of that more cast uh classic caster style and then how you have you know some of the same style attack themes like i'm hoping he has something like an altiris uh abyss break uh grand chariot but i'm i'm hoping his style is in like is, is in like ordnance guns like giants like he can like summon huge artillery like space artillery or something badass like that i'm, I'm hoping his is so straightforward cool like, just imagine, like, you're fighting a guy, and he just summons, like, a giant photon cannon or something, or, like, a giant plasma, like, machine gun out of nowhere. Not like, oh, not like why it's like, oh, I'll remake it into a different style gun. No, he just, like, straight summons guns. Like, imagine it's, like, Urza's the Knight, but instead it's military weaponry. Like, like if, like, if you just imagine, like, a ship, and it has, like, a big cannon on it. Imagine it's like, hey, this was supposed to go on a ship, and he's like... Uh, no, I'll take it, and then just, like, touches it, uses the ether granite, and just disappears, and he can just summon it at will. I think that'd be badass. I actually think that would be a really, um, fun and easy power, because Urza's power, for the most part, is pretty simple. You know, she's got a pocket dimension she puts weapons and armor in, and she can swap them out. Now, it's still a really cool power, and you could do a lot with it. You could do the same thing if you did it with justice and guns, and I guess more in, like, space cannons. That'd be awesome. But anyway, 
Uh, other than that, though, um, that's going to my wrap up for this one for the most part. I mean, it's it's more of a hype chapter, and I still am very hyped about it. I really want to see what comes next, but I still believe that if like, if it ends up having, like, some sort of hot spring on this planet, we'll have at least a chapter of cooldown and just comfort and, and, and baseline fun before we get back into the crazy. I just realized that my my cover photo is, is, is super big. I didn't even resize it. I went through the entire, I went through a whole setup of trying to go and get the, the a better one that was, like, HD so it looked much cleaner in the background, and I completely forgot to, to resize it. Well, uh, that's okay. It leaves something extra to anybody who stayed to the very end. Anyway, other than that, though, uh, comment below. Tell me your thoughts are about this chapter. Tell me your thoughts are about what's going on and what's to come in Eden Zero. And uh, I'd really appreciate it if you would uh, thumbs up from the like button, subscribe button, and uh, check out my other videos. But other than that, I appreciate everyone who's already subscribed. I thank you all for listening. Bye.